And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Sudan. Thank you, Mr. President. And I would like, sir, to congratulate you on assuming the presidency of the Council for the current month. And we would like to thank Uruguay for the excellent work during the past month uh, while it was president of the Council. I would also like uh, to thank uh, the member states of this distinguished Council for their statements with uh, two very quick comments. First of all, the referral decision concerning the situation in Darfur to the court was not done unanimously and was not a consensus decision. Second, concerning the question of genocide and that genocide has taken place in Darfur, let me indicate uh, the following uh, very quickly. At the end of 2015, Mr. President, the General Assembly of the United Nations adopted a decision to commemorate the victims of genocide. And in our statement on that occasion and in support of designating that day of commemoration, we said concerning Sudan and we recalled all the international testimonies that very categorically refute that any act of genocide had taken place in Darfur and as part of that statement, we also quoted the testimony of uh, the former Secretary of State of the United States, Mr. Colin Powell, and the testimony of His Excellency, the, Secretary, the former Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Kofi Annan, as well as uh, the testimony of the President of the AU in uh, 2004, the former Nigerian President, Mr. Obasango, as well as uh, the testimony of the EU and the African Union and the League of Arab States, in addition to testimonies by Médecins Sans Frontières, which won the Nobel Prize in 1999, as far as I remember, for the role it played to put an end in genocide in Rwanda in 1994. All of that, sir, in addition to the fact that there was the report by the International Investigation Committee, which was submitted to this distinguished council at the beginning of uh, 2005, which, uh, 2015, which said that there was no uh, genocide that had taken place uh, in Darfur. Mr. President, the ICC and the prosecutor of the ICC continued their assaults and the use of inappropriate language that we have not been accustomed to at the United Nations and the other international organs that have their international standing. The ICC prosecutor, in the absence of the necessary restraint on the part of your counsel, the ICC prosecutor continued to use offensive language against the, His Excellency the President of Sudan and against the Security Council, the highest political authority in the United Nations organization, by using expressions like the failure of the Council or the loss of its credibility concerning His Excellency the President of the Republic of the Sudan. The Constitution of 2005, the Transitional Constitution, stipulates that the President of the Republic is the symbol of the country and of its sovereignty. The Speaker repeats in English, the symbol of the country and of its sovereignty. We do not accept abuse in any way and from any quarter, let alone from this defective kangaroo court. It is essential for me here to draw your attention to the statement by His Excellency, the representative of the Russian Federation in the Security Council, that uh, the reports by the prosecutor to the Council have now become akin to the reports uh, submitted by monitoring bodies. They look like reports from monitoring bodies. And I refer you to paragraphs 24 to 29 and paragraphs 34 to 36 of the report. 
and all of those show us the lack of knowledge on the part of the prosecutor and the prosecutor's office as uh, to the judicial nature, the presumed judicial nature of uh, the court. And here, perhaps it is appropriate to remind uh, of what was said before by the former president of the Assembly of States uh, on uh, the ineffectiveness of the prosecutor saying that the prosecutor cannot even put together an indictment. Mr. President. The sorry state of this court, the ICC, cannot be addressed except through ignoring it and leaving it to collapse from within. And that, indeed, is in its inevitable fate. It is our honor that we in the Sudan would be the country that had drawn attention the most to the failure of the statute of the ICC, which would lead it to the fatal clash with the irrefutable and imperative norms of international law, like the principles of equality and uh, the principle that uh, international covenants uh, and agreements are binding only to their parties and also the uh, principle of regality that stipulates uh, that there is no crime without a text, nullum crime and sin legi. The ICC, especially its first prosecutor and then the current uh, prosecutor, the current prosecutor that was a deputy prosecutor before, have taken my country lightly and now they are tasting the results of uh, what they have done their oversight, their confusion, their aimlessness, and their politicization. And since the jurisdiction of this ICC addresses individuals or physical persons in the member states of its statute, it is sufficient for us to show that about 60% of the people in the world belong to countries that do not, or to states that do not recognize either the authority or the jurisdiction of this court, like China, Russia, United States, Egypt, India, Pakistan, and Indonesia, and those countries constitute, in terms of population, no less than half of the inhabitants of this globe, even more. Mr. President, the incoherence in the report that you have before you today is but the result of the earlier sin in establishing a political organ called the ICC to discharge a judicial task or the institution of a judicial organ to carry out a political mission. It is not a coincidence that the ICC focuses all its investigations and all its uh, trials on Africa because it believes that Africa is an easier place politically than others. This disparity goes beyond the prosecutors and the judges. It is something that affects the statute and the idea of international criminal justice that concerns itself with individuals to begin with. And therefore, every time His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Sudan, responds to an invitation by one of the member states of the United Nations of one of the regional or, or uh, regional organizations or geographical organizations, the predicament that the uh, ICC finds itself in is repeated. We here invoke an international legal system, a solid system that places the Charter of the United Nations in the first place and gives it precedence in terms of commitment and in terms of implementation. And now here we are before the commitments of state that are connected with the Charter of the United Nations and the immunity of presidents and representatives the immunities of the presidents of states and the representative of states and before the commitments of the states towards international organizations like the African Union and the other political groupings like the League of Arab States or the uh, OIC <coughs> or the Non-Aligned Movement. Here we reach one conclusion, which is the ICC has created a contradiction and in and a conflict in two of the fields upon which the international system has predicated itself for a very long period of time. The first aspect is the clashes and the conflict that the ICC tries to provoke by its very existence. It tries to provoke that between the various texts of international law. And the second is the conflict that it creates between the principles of justice and peace. And what is astonishing is that the person who wrote this report makes reference to the necessity of taking into account the root causes of the conflict without understanding, without taking into account that that means seeking to conclude a peace agreement 
a negotiated peace agreement, which is indeed what took place in Doha in July 2011. Since 2002 un until today, June 2017, it has become evident that a failure in implementation has completed the full cycle of failure since the very beginning when it was found. And the result of implementation after 15 years of the entry into effect of the statute of the ICC is a sad and disappointing result. And we ask the question, how many were the cases that have been ruled on by the ICC? How many cases have been ruled on? And how much was spent on that until now? And what is the cost of one single trial if we divide the budget of the ICC over 15 years by the number of trials that have been discharged? I defy the prosecutor to answer those questions. Also, those who have supported the idea of the ICC, they said that ad hoc tribunals or temporary tribunals created by the Security Council lack the element of deterrence and that the ICC enjoys that element of deterrence because it is a permanent tribunal. And the question now is, how, to what extent did the ICC succeed in creating the right deterrence for the violations of human rights and the, the laws of rule and international human rule over, all over the world? And what is the capacity of the Security Council in the equal implementation of Article 13 of the statute? Does the court operate on the basis of equality between states, all the states that have accepted to be parties to the statute, those are the difficult questions that this court has got to answer, and those are extremely important, precise, and extremely, extremely important and precise questions. And we believe that it will be impossible for the ICC and its supporters to answer those questions. But what is important for us in this session, in this meeting, is that all those discrepancies and shortcomings could only be covered by the prosecutor by politicizing her work or inventing evidence or bribing witnesses. Mr. President, the Office of the Prosecutor left aside its uh, judicial and legal task stipulated in uh, the statute of the court and devoted the greater part of the report to elements that are merely against the government of Sudan. And this rush and this deep desire to condemn the government of Sudan only warrants disdain and contempt because the prosecutor forgot the main and principal task assigned to her. To our surprise, and I, don't, I think that most members of the Security Council will share this surprise with us, the report welcomed the extension of the mandate of the group of experts in Darfur, the group of experts uh, created by the Security Council by Resolution 2340. We were surprised also to see that the ICC has asked the government of Sudan to ensure continued unfettered access to the various areas of Darfur. Even the report spoke about addressing the root causes of the conflict in Darfur as if it were the Security Council or thinking of itself as if it were the Security Council. And the report says, unless the root causes of the conflict are addressed, the situation in Darfur will remain unstable and unpredictable. The catastrophe is not only in the ineffectiveness of the prosecutor and her office. The catastrophe even goes beyond that in the absence of honesty and any spirit of equity or justice or even balance in stating facts. For a very long time, the prosecutor and her office, they have accepted 
to play a political role or to play the role of a monitoring mechanism, it would have been far worthier of them to indicate that Resolution 2340, and for the very first time since 2005, which was the year in which the referral decision was taken for the first time since 2005, indicated that the situation is largely back to normal in all of the five states of the four which are equal in their area, the area of France or Iraq, except for a very, very small area, a very small part of only one of those provinces of Darfur. Also, the report has avoided mentioning the explicit condemnation in Resolution 2340 of armed movements uh, that use civil installations and using those as shields, which in itself uh, subjects the civilians, especially the IDPs, to danger. And it is the very same report that has never ever overlooked mentioning paragraph 28, uh, launching its assault against Sudan, saying that uh, the civilians are still in danger. Finally, Mr. President, we would like to voice our appreciation to the Secretariat of the United Nations, the Secretariat that has distanced itself from the aims of this ICC, which sought to involve the Secretariat to make the ICC to look as if it is part of the United Nations systems when actually it is not. And we would like also to commend the positions of those countries that did not fall to the instigation that is carried out by the office of the prosecutor. And we'd also like to commend the firm position of the Security Council in lending assistance to end the conflict in Darfur in a final manner and uh, to support a political settlement and refusing to cause this conflict to be protracted. And we are optimistic that together and with firm steps, we are going to move towards uh, attaining the common goal of security and peace. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of the Sudan for his statement.